Fluid statics involves the study of fluids that are at rest. It means, for example, a liquid that is in a jerry can or in a tank where there is no flow, viscous forces are not dealt with. And therefore, since there, are, there is no flow and therefore no viscous forces are being able to take part, then it's the pressure forces that can be analyzed in that regard. In this video, we are going to look at variation of pressure in a fluid at rest. And we are going to look at the, the, hydros the hydrostatics law that tells us how the pressure in that particular container of a fluid at rest varies as you move from one point to the other while following a vertically downward direction. To determine the pressure at any point in a fluid at rest, hydrostatics law, as we have already said, is used. And this is stating that the rate of increase of pressure in a vertically downward direction must equal to the specific weight of the fluid at that particular point. Now we are going to use the following ex uh, uh, illustration for us to be able to understand what this hydrostatics law states and what it implies. Now when we look at this illustration, we consider a fluid that is in a, a container that is at rest. So if we just consider a rectangular a fluid element of that particular liquid in the container, if it is of a cross-section, for example, a small cross-section area A, we are using delta A to imply a very small cross-section area, but which can be perceptible, or it can it is finite. We, we can see it with our eyes, we can visualize it with our eyes. Then, if it is uh, having faces A, B, D, C, O, C, D, and it has got a height, the delta Z, its thickness, as you go from uh, face A, B to face C, D, its thickness or height is delta Z, then we find that also we need to know the vertical distance between it and the free liquid surface. This is a free liquid surface and uh, the vertical distance from uh, where the fluid element is, we are taking it to be Z. Now if we consider the fact that we have pressure of this uh, uh, pressure acting on this particular fluid from the surrounding waters, other waters surrounding this particular fluid element. We find pressure is likely to be the same, but the forces uh, those pressures are going to exert may be different. For example, when we consider this pressure P is the same pressure here, is the same pressure here, is the same even in the, in the horizontal direction. So if it exerts a particular, pre uh, that pressure exerts a particular force here in this direction, in the positive X direction, then it will of course receive an equal and the opposite reaction from the pressure force due to the pressure acting on this face BC. Now, having considered that at equilibrium, we see that in the horizontal direction, all forces are equal and they cancel each other. When we go to the vertical direction, we find there is a pressure acting, of course, the same pressure acting on, for, on face AB. The force as a result of that pressure is going to be pressure uh, you know, a force is equal to pressure times area. We know that force is going to equal to pressure times area. Area. Now, since the pressure is this small p, then the cross-sectional area is delta A. Therefore, the force acting here will be p times delta A. So that's the force that is acting here. What about at the bottom. You see, this uh, small fluid element has got also some weight. So there is a, a vertical force due to pressure acting on AB and also another force vertically going downwards due to the weight of this fluid element. But as we move and go to the bottom of this fluid element, this, this force or the pressure here 
is also felt down here. So this pressure small p, we will also multiply by the cross-sectional area and it will be acting on phase CD and that is also P times delta A on this phase. What about to you see also as you move, there is a fact that as you move from this phase AB, for example, moving from B to C, there is always a variation, a change in pressure. From here, the pressure here is greater than the pressure here. The pressure here is greater than the pressure up to the time you reach at the bottom. So we will find that since this is a small fluid element, we will have a variation, the rate of change of pressure here as del P del Z. Now, that is the rate of increase of pressure as you move from B to C. But since we need the pressure that will be felt at that point at, the, at, at C now, at the cross-section area as you, as you move from here to there, then we need to multiply this one with the vertical distance you will have moved from B to C, and that will be delta Z. So we multiply by delta Z, and this will give us the pressure that is going to be also felt here as a result of the change or the rate of increase of pressure. It is like if you have, for example, a gradient of a line. Uh, for example, we see we have the gradient as um, if I call gradient M of a line equal to change in Y of a change in X. If, for example, I want uh, because I'm taking this del P, del Z as uh, the gradient, if I want del Y, which is uh, the change in Y, then it means I will have del Y equal to M, which is the gradient, times del X. So if I multiply by del X, I will be able to get Y. Likewise here, for me to get the pressure that is going to be felt here, I need to get uh, that uh, rate which is uh, which i'm taking to be like the pressure gradient i might pry by the change in z because i'm moving from here the, the 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 gradient is along here from here to there pressure is increasing so if i might pry by the vertical distance i will have moved to cover the fluid element layer then i will have what we the, 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 that pressure as del p del z times del z so since I also want now the force due to that pressure, I might pry by area. So now having expounded on that, let us move at a very terrible speed. Of course, we have already said that the, that P is the pressure intensity on phase A, B, and the Z is the distance of the liquid element from the free liquid surface, and the Z is the height of the liquid element. Of course, as we have said, all the thickness of the liquid element, then the A is going to be also the cross-sectional area of the liquid element, as we have already said. Now, talking in terms of equations about forces acting on the fluid element, we have said that the pressure force acting on phase AB is equal to pressure times the cross-section area, and therefore it is going to be P times delta A, and it is going to be acting vertically this is going to be acting vertically downward not upward vertically downward okay we go to pressure force on dc on face dc it is going to be uh, also p because we said that pressure is felt down on face cd so times the cross-section area at cd which will be uh, delta s since it is a uniform cross-section then plus the force due to the other rate of increase of pressure, which we have said the pressure now would be del P del Z times delta Z and times now the cross-section area, and this would give us the force on phase DC. And this force acts vertically upward, of course it acts vertically upward. Now we also talked about the force due to weight of the fluid element, we know that uh, force due to a fluid 
is always going to be the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid times the accession due to gravity. So if I consider that fluid element, then I will take a small volume, which is delta V. But we also know delta V can be the same as the cross-section area times the thickness or the vertical distance that you travel to cover up uh, the fluid element from top to bottom. And this would give you delta A times delta Z. So if I substitute it in here, I will get my force due to weight as rho g times delta a times delta z so when we consider the equilibrium conditions when the fluid is at rest under equilibrium then downward forces are going to equal to upward forces what happens is that now i look for i sum the upward forces and i equate them to the downward forces we say the downward force is uh, now the force due to pressure on a b then plus uh, due, the, the force due to weight, which we have already calculated, and this is going to equal to the pressure force due to pressure acting on force CD, then plus that pressure that comes as a result of the rate of increase in the pressure as you move from phase AB to phase CD, and this is going to give you del P del Z times delta Z times delta A. And uh, since this one is the same as this, I will cancel them. And uh, I will also divide both sides by uh, del, del Z, del A, del Z. Del A. So I cancel that, I cancel that and that, so that I remain with rho g which is equal to del p del z times 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 one of course because these ones have already gone so this means that uh, i will be remaining with the rate of increase of pressure in a vertical downward direction because z is the vertical distance so we are increasing pressure uh, from uh, the top to the bottom so that means there is a, an increase in pressure from of course from the top to bottom and the rate will be uh, the change in the pressure versus the change in the vertical distance so it will be uh, del p del z which is equal to rho g so if i want to if i limit this and now i consider when for example del a del a or del z when it tends to infinity then it means i'm taking a very big uh, liquid element now which takes us maybe to the size of a big tank and therefore it means i will have the integral for example of dp equal to integral of um, rho g z so at the end of the day i will have p which will equal to rho g times z but uh, what is important here of course if for example i was considering from p1 to p2 pressure increasing from p1 p2 this would give us rho g uh, increasing the distance maybe from z z1 to z2 then we will have, of course this is dp, so we will have p2 minus p1 divided by maybe z2 minus z1 which is equal to rho g. So still in the same way it will tell us that the rate of increase of pressure in a vertically downward direction is equal to the specific weight of the fluid at that point. This rho g is the specific weight, specific weight of the liquid so this is what we call the hydrostatics law hydrostatics hydrostatic law thank you so much for watching see you in the next video please remember to subscribe remember to comment remember to like and share and enable us to serve you better